I'm Jeff at r &J Control. What we're going to do today is perform a transfer test on a home standby generator system. We find very often our homeowners buy these machines and they become intimidated by them. Uh, I want to show you how to do a transfer test. Uh, it's a good exercise to do, not all the time, but maybe once a month, a couple times a year at least, um, just to make sure the whole system operates because very often you buy them and you find that you don't have that many power failures. Uh, so we're going to go through a sequence. This is a 20 kW Briggs & Stratton natural gas generator with a 200 amp whole house transfer switch. A uh, very popular combination nowadays. So we're going to go through the sequence. This is the mainline circuit breaker for the house. It's 200 amps. Basically the service comes in through this switch and the transfer switch then distributes that power through the rest of the house. I'm going to throw this breaker which is going to then commence the start sequence for the generator. Okay, I can hear the transfer switch clicking. It's beginning its timing sequence. The generator's beginning its start. The generator's up and online right now. It's gonna give it a few seconds to warm up. And then within, um, they're all a little different based on settings. 15 to 30 seconds, this you're gonna hear a, uh, an actuation of the transfer switch contactor in here. That will then distribute power back to the rest of the house on generator. Okay, the house is fully on generator power now. It's as simple as that. This is a installation where the transfer switch is outside the house with the generator. Your installation may have this transfer switch in a basement or a garage. The only difference in between the two sequences is that you're actually gonna see the lights turn out in the basement or the garage. You might have to stand in the dark for a couple of seconds, but the end result's gonna be the same thing. The generator's gonna start and power is gonna be uh, supplied by the generator. I encourage you to run a test like this. 15 minutes is usually long enough. You can also use this time to go in the house and operate a couple of functions, make sure that everything's working properly. When you want to reverse the sequence, all you're going to do is uh, use your whole hand. You want to reset this breaker, and that's going to begin the shutdown sequence. Okay, we've now restored normal utility back to the transfer switch. The generator and the transfer switch are smart enough to know that power doesn't always restore perfectly the first time. Very often it'll, it'll come in, it'll come out, it'll go back and forth a couple times. In order to avoid the generator starting and stopping four or five times, it's gonna, it's gonna stay online for a little while. Make sure that the power source is stable. Usually about 30 seconds or so, usually not more than a minute. Once that's completed, we'll hear the timers begin to start, a couple of clicks, the contactor will reverse its motion, and the, and the house will be back on utility power. Okay, so there we have it. We're back on utility again. The machine is going to run for maybe another minute or so uh, just to finish its cool down sequence. And um, just in case power did go out again, your machine's already running. The transfer would be that much faster. That basically concludes a home transfer test on your Briggs & Stratton uh, 18 to 20 kW. But these rules apply for the entire line. And it basically is the same sequence of events for any manufacturer generator. Thank you.